Let's talk about why wholesalers should not be pulling out of, pulling out of, like there's no consequences to it, real estate deals and what they should be doing instead. My name is Ryan Dossie. Let's dive right in. I've been in the real estate space for over 10 years now, and I got my start wholesaling real estate. I didn't have a ton of capital or credit, and it was kind of my way to make something from nothing. So I can't knock folks that are wholesaling or have tried wholesaling, but I can call out the bad actors. I get a kick anytime I do a video or an Instagram post around this, people will be like, oh, you're such a hater, like now that you're better than us, no. Back in the day, I wasn't overpaying for properties just to try to lock something up, just to try to beat somebody down once I'm under a contract. My focus was on getting such a good deal that if I couldn't find somebody to buy it, I would figure out how to buy the place myself, whether that meant going to a bank, friends, family members, or what I wanna talk about today, selling everything you own to get that deal done. I feel like a lot of the problems in the wholesaling real estate space would just go away overnight if people took a Matthew 13, 44 approach to this. This is a parable in the Bible about a man who finds a treasure in a field, rehides the treasure, goes back home, sells everything he owns with joy to then go buy that field and kind of by proxy the treasure within it. Now, it's a parable around the kingdom of heaven, but I think it's also a really good parable or example for wholesaling. You should be getting such good deals that if you can't find somebody to buy it, you're gonna figure out how to take that place down yourself because you truly believe in the value that is in that opportunity. We're not just trying to rip fast cash, we're trying to invest. And you know, interestingly in that story, it wasn't like the man went, got a contract on the land and then found somebody else to buy it from him for a little bit more. Like, no, he went and bought the place himself. Me personally, I haven't wholesaled now in over a year. The reason being, I personally believe if I get such a good deal, I want to maximize that opportunity. I would rather do fewer deals and make more money and not have all this collateral damage and fallout. The person that is likely to pay the most for a property that needs work is going to be a newer fix and flipper, a handyman type that's represented by an agent on the MLS. I had to step back and be like, I may be being a little arrogant if I assume that I have the best buyer in the entire world on my local list of people. I probably don't, that's, that's pretty prideful. Another factor that kind of reinforced this for me personally, I funded a deal for somebody in CCF. I wanna say they were under contract for like 175 was what we'd funded and they were selling it to somebody else that was using hard money, needed a little bit of time. They were moving the property for like 185. It appraised for 250. And I was like, bro, we already own the house, right? Like the likelihood that you won't make more money by taking the place to the open market is pretty low. Yeah, it's more risky than wholesaling. I can't just leave somebody holding the bag in my you know empty list of promises, but I am likely to get that person in front of the ideal buyer for that place. I personally don't have any issue with wholesaling if you're not lying about property values, if you're not misrepresenting yourself as a cash buyer, if you're not having to use like verbal gymnastics to get the deal done. There was a wholesale deal I did early on in my career that helped put me full-time in real estate. That was actually my wife's grandparents' triplex. The place had actually been listed on the MLS by an agent that hadn't done a great job and simply needed to be marketed appropriately to the right people. I pitched the place like an investment opportunity, not like a house, to the Bigger Pockets marketplace and had the place sold. They actually ended up netting more money because of that. Quite frankly, is that like a wholesaling plug or is that a the guy was a bad agent, I don't know, you decide. All of these coaches that are out here telling people, oh, just get the contract, see if you can move it, blast it out, the fundamentals in this model are broken. You have to be able to understand what the property's worth, what the repair costs are looking like, and what somebody would pay for that place. And you should be getting such a good deal that if you can't find somebody else to buy it, 
you will gladly sell everything you own to buy that property and complete the deal yourself. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Again, my name is Ryan Dossie. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. Talk to you guys next time.